Hi everyone, welcome back to ASFC Chemistry and I'm going to go through the mechanisms you need for the year one part of the course in lower six. These are only the curly arrow mechanisms, there is the radical substitution uh, mechanism but that's in an earlier video if you want to have a look on the organic year one playlist. So to begin with then, let's have a look at the two different names. We've got electrophilic and nucleophilic and addition and substitution respectively. So electrophilic, remember this means it involves an electrophile. And an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. Whereas a nucleophile in nucleophilic substitution, this is an electron pair donor. That's important to get us started off with. They both also involve partial charges, so they both have a dipole drawn on. So that's not really a, a perfect way of indicating how to start these mechanisms. However, we have got some endpoints. We've got that addition, means that we're only going to see one product at the end of the mechanism. And substitution means we should see two products. So that's a large organic product and then something that gets kicked off. Whereas over here, the electrophile at the start is completely added on. Let's have a look at the curly arrow mechanism for each. Now, starting off then for electrophilic addition, there is one consisting starting point at least in that it has to start with the double bond. Now, the double bond then can be part of whatever structure it needs to be. It could have been part of a cyclic structure, which looks like a square. So cyclobutene, for instance, or it could be a very long carbon chain. It could be at the end of it. It doesn't really matter, but what you would need to do is make sure you maintain whatever structure they give you in the exam and only show the displayed formula or at least a structural formula like so, where you could put, say, CH3 here if you wanted to. Don't ever draw skeletal in the mechanisms at A-level. Now, what this is going to react with is an electrophile, and an electrophile has got to be something, as we've said, that accepts a pair of electrons. So the electrophile I've chosen for this one is a molecule of bromine. So this would be Br2. This is actually our test for the double bond that we use in lower six and upper six, and it allows us to see if there is an unsaturated group in our molecule because it will have a color change of the orange of the bromine to colorless. So, to start off then, how does this act as an electron pair acceptor? Well, the double bond here is an area of high electron density between these two carbons, and what it does is that it induces a dipole in this nonpolar molecule. So you end up with a delta plus and a delta minus just here. Now this delta plus end allows us to accept a pair of electrons. So we start our curly arrow at the double bond and we go over to the first bromine like so. Then the single bond here in the middle breaks and both electrons transfer over here to the bromine. Now this is an example therefore of heterolytic of that covalent bond and you need to be aware of that term and how it applies to this mechanism at this point. Then we end up with an intermediate and our intermediate is described as a carbocation. I'm going to choose this carbon on the left and I will keep this CH3 on there to make sure you can see this going on. This carbon on the left just here ends up only having three bonds. One of the bonds that it did have here to the other carbon has now been broken and what we can see is that this carbon is going to pick up an extra single bond. So it's not going to have the double bond here. It's going to have a single bond in that direction. And it's going to have three single bonds going out elsewhere. And in fact, one of those bonds is going to take on board the bromine that we can see the curly arrow reaching out towards here. The other two could be towards whatever. It doesn't really matter too much. It could be H's, could be R groups. It doesn't make too much of a difference. So on this side here, if we draw back on the CH3 from before so we can track where we are, this carbon is only bonded to three other atoms or groups. And it's been left here with a positive charge. It's called a carbocation because it's a carbon with a positive charge. Remember, cations are positively charged ions. Now, what we also have is our other bromine, which is now actually a bromide ion. And it's got this lone pair here. There are other lone pairs around, but we only consider one of them. And what's going to happen is our next and final curly arrow attacks that carbon just here. What that means is a new bond is formed so that each carbon now is bonded four times 
and each carbon from the original double bond is now bonded to a bromine. You'll notice this carbon was on the molecule and has stayed the same all the way through. Nothing has changed about it. You only change the carbons that were originally in the functional group of the double bond. The next one we're going to have a look at in more detail is a nucleophilic substitution. Now this one I'm going to draw a bit bigger down here because I know that there is only one step in this mechanism. Now what you need is a CX bond. CX bonds are really very, very polar. The X here can be any of the halogens. So we're looking at fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Now these are electronegative, with the fluorine being very electronegative in fact, although actually the CI bond is the weakest. What you've got here is a polar bond and three bonds to whatever else. It doesn't matter too much. R groups, H's, doesn't really matter. The important thing is you also need a nucleophile. Now a nucleophile, different to an electrophile we've already mentioned, is an electron pair donor. And the only nucleophile that you have in year one of the A level is the OH minus. Now this is OCRA for instance, with AQA you may have a different uh, set of nucleophiles in year one, but this is the only nucleophile you see in year one of OCRA. And what's going to happen is this lone pair is going to attack that carbon atom just here. And once again, another example of heterolytic fission, this bond is going to break onto the X. And what we end up with is an alcohol functional group, and we've kicked off an X minus like so. And that's it for nucleophilic substitution. It's only got one step. Both of these are very common in the year one exams as it's the first opportunity you have of seeing a curly arrow. The curly arrows sometimes seem a little bit childish when you're drawing them out, but advanced level chemistry uses these a lot to determine which functional groups are going to react in advanced level chemistry, how structures can rearrange using something called resonance between two different states. It's completely advanced level to use a curly arrow, and so at A level you need to learn how they can be incorporated. I hope that gives you a good summary of all the mechanisms of year one. Stay tuned to the playlist and I'll see you again at ASFC Chemistry and until then, happy revising.